Morning crafty friends, it's Sandy here. Welcome back. I'm up on the Alex Siberia Designs channel today and I'm creating with Alex Siberia's Tulips Treasures. This set has a layering stencil to easily add color as I've done with these cards that I'm showing you now and I'll post a link to the video for these cards in the comments below. As you can see, I've had a lot of fun with this set. I have made numerous cards, I think seven or eight actually, and uh, the two tulip images are really fun to play with. So there's also a matching set of coordinating dies and you can also get foil plates for the tulips, but we're not using any of those today. We're going to play and paper piece these pretty flowers with pattern paper. So I've dug out a selection from my stash and what I'm looking for is color combinations where there's a light and dark with a similar pattern and this booklet seems to have what I'm looking for. Um, this one is Echo Park Fashionista. I don't know how old it is. Like I said, it was in my stash. So I am going to grab a couple of the pieces here and we're going to use these um, to do our cards. So what you're going to need is uh, your embossing products, like your black embossing powder, your Versamark ink pad, and uh, a heat tool. I'm also using the Misty to do the stamping because you have to stamp two of each to get a contrast uh, to create these images. Okay, so first up we want to set up the Misty. I am going to use the large single flower for today. Uh, you get the best results with something like this that has large petals and it's also a lot easier to cut out all the pieces compared to the tiny little ones in the other tulip, which is also pretty but maybe not wonderful for this technique. So I just want the leaves and I am trying to use as little of my uh, pattern paper as possible. So I'm just lining up into the corner for the leaves. I'm going to hold my pattern paper in place. It's hanging over the end, that's not a big deal. Then I'm gonna close the lid of my Misty and that's going to attach my stamp to the lid and we can start embossing. Off, I'm using my uh, Rabbit Hole Designs Anti-Static to get rid of any fingerprints all over my pattern paper. And I'm going to be using, as I said, black embossing powder because it does a nice outline. Gold is also nice, but um, black is pretty spectacular. And I'm also using some darker colors, so black will help um, really highlight them. So ink up with your Versamark, which is the ink that will hold your embossing powder in place until you heat set it. I'm going to stamp this twice because I don't think it's been used for a while and I want a really good solid image because we're going to be cutting these all out. So taking it out of my Misty, I close my Misty so I don't get a whole bunch of embossing powder inside of it. You want to cover your stamped image, shake it off, and then we're going to heat set it. And I will spare you from that noise. <laughs> All right, so I have one. Now I need a darker color or a different pattern for the second one. So back to my little book of paper and I found this nice solid green one which is a little bit darker. It actually is the darker ink of the other one that we're using and so this will be perfect. Again I'm lining up my paper so that I'm just going to be working on the leaves and kind of save as much paper as I can. I don't know why we all hoard this paper. You know that I make more paper every day but we're all little hoarders of all these pretty papers. Okay, so again, inking up just the leaves and we're going to do a little bit of stamping again uh, with the black embossing powder and then heat setting. Next, we're moving to the pattern paper and we're going to be switching over and we're going to be heat embossing the head of the flower only. So again, I'm repositioning my stamp and I am going to uh, use my little bunny, I like to refer to it, my anti-static to get rid of any of the ink that was on the stamp and my fingerprints. And we are inking up just the flower this time. It doesn't matter if you get a little bit of the leaf, um, just don't heat emboss it and then you can wipe the embossing powder right off of it. Okay, so we're gonna heat set this one to heat up that plastic and we're moving on to the other pattern. So this one is very detailed and has a lot more pink in it. It has a good contrast to the other one. So I'm thinking that this might be working out quite nicely. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. You're going to stamp and heat emboss the flower. And now we have all the pieces. We are ready to start doing our cutout and our layering. 
I'm really going to speed this next section up because, you know, watching me cut out leaves and flowers is kind of like watching paint dry. <laughs> anyway, you want to chop off the pieces that you're going to use and then you're going to use your detailed scissors and get in there and get right up close and personal with that embossing line and don't leave any kind of hanging out and cut out all the pieces. You want a base piece. Uh, for this one, I'm using this light colored one that I'm working on right now is going to be my base piece. And I'm going to be gluing the solid darker green images over top. So that's why I'm cutting out the entire image. On to the dark green one, and I'm just going to cut out uh, two or three of the pieces that kind of look like they're underneath, so they would be the darker or the shaded area. If you were coloring them with your Copics, you would be using your darker colors on these ones. And see, we're just going to overlay them like that. So I just cut out these three pieces. Okay, so on to the flower. I'm kind of looking at them, deciding which one's going to be my base. And my red one, the solid red one's going to be my base. The one I'm cutting right now, I am cutting the petals out, and those are going to be my glued overlays. Okay, so I'm almost finished, just a couple more to go, and you can see behind where I'm cutting that I have a nice contrast coming. I'm not sure I'm actually loving this because the pieces are kind of big, and I'm looking at it thinking, hmm, maybe I want a smaller design. So I've heat embossed this piece on the left, and I have decided I am going to cut this out and give this one a go. For these little tiny pieces, the Barely Art glue with that nice fine tip is really, really, really helpful in gluing these together. As you can see, I've already done the flower, but I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration here as we put the leaves together. So I put the glue onto the base piece, and then I am going to add the overlay. Sorry, there's not enough color in what I'm looking at right now for my camera, so it's trying to zoom in. Okay, so again, you're just going to add the glue, and then you're going to add the cutout piece. And the black outline from the embossing really, really helps to outline this and also helps you to lay the pieces nice together and provides a nice border. And there we go, there is our pretty finished flower. Isn't it beautiful? Now we need a background for our pretty flower, and I'm going to keep it simple, but I want an understated background noise. I'm using the Glowing Geometry Hot Foil Plate and Black Foil on white cardstock. So I have my glimmer machine warming up. I'm getting out my black foil, and this is a new roll, so I have to take that little plastic circle off of it first. It's very sticky, and you want to make sure that you cut the foil a way that has any of that sticky on it because it has removed the black foil and you'll get a little bald spot in your foiling if you use it. See that spot there? Don't use it. <laughs> I've learned the hard way. Okay, so I like to process my glimmer foiling this way. I warm up the plate. It's facing up and I'm going to cut my piece of foil a little bit bigger than my plate. I place it down, good side down and I position it. I use the top left hand corner to line everything up and so I'm also going to put my cardstock up in that top left hand corner and that allows me to line up the top and the left side and then I use Spellbinders tape to hold everything in place. I have pushed the button, the timer uh, that is warming up and is going to tell me when my plate is ready and I add tape to the top and the sides especially on big plates like this, so that while I'm shimmying it around, getting it into the Platinum 6 die cutting machine to run it through, that the plate and the foil don't move and I get a really nice crisp image. So I'm covering these with my other two plates and I've also got a shim because my uh, die cut machine is a little bit loose from <laughs> multiple uses. And I'm just waiting for this little light to quit blinking. That's how you know when it's all heated up and ready to go. And you're going to see that that happens just shortly here. I'm going to place those plates over my foiling and I very gently pull the plate out. And then I use my two thumbs to hold everything in place 
so that nothing shimmies around and you see that I'm laying it right now I'm putting my thumbs over all of the end that holds everything in place and I'm moving it over to my die cutting machine and very gently placing everything in there and you only want to run this through once if you run it through more than once once you get to the other end of this it jumps a little bit when it comes off the plate and that quite often kind of knocks everything sideways and you'll end up with a fuzzy image so that's why I only do it once gently put it back on remove the cover plates and then you gently pick up your image Ooh, and it turned out beautifully. Woohoo! Don't throw that foil away. Okay, I'm just taking my tape off. This did, it turned out beautiful. And it's going to be absolutely perfect with my flowers. Can't wait to show you. Isn't that pretty? A little bit of background noise, but not a lot of color. This piece here, you can use the solid uh, foiling plate and get a reverse image. So don't throw those out. I'm loving this. Woohoo! Okay, the last piece I need is a sentiment, and I'm going to use the large hello die set from Alex Siberia, of course. And it has a die cut, plus it has a shadow. So I'm doing the die cut in mere gold, because every card needs a little bit of bling. And then I'm going to do the background in black. I want the contrast, and I also want it to um, kind of mirror up with the background, but the reverse where it's solid black. So I've got these all cut out and all I need to do now is just add a little bit of glue onto the back and join them together. So now I have all the pieces that I want to put the guard together and I'm just kind of doing a little bit of auditioning to uh, see what I like and I noticed that I have a blank spot on the right side and the top of my background. And so I'm going to cut that off so I'm cutting this down to a four by five and a quarter card front, just slicing off those two little, I'll call them bald pieces. I don't want that on my card. I have a white card base, so it's four and a quarter by 11, scored and folded at five and a half. And I like white card bases because then you can do anything you want on the inside of them. So I'm auditioning all these pieces, getting everything lined up. I like to dry fit to make sure that I'm liking everything. And I do, but I think I need a little boldness going on here. So I cut a card front out of black cardstock, so four and a quarter by five and a half, and it provides a really nice frame around my image, so I'm going to use it. So here's my little trick for getting these on straight. I'm using my score pal, I'm using score buddy, sorry, top left hand corner to line everything up, and then I'm using shears to cut off any overhang. I seldom get them cut the right way. So this is my little trick to get rid of that white edge. Just use your scissors. And I do one layer at a time so that I get a nice finished cut. And I'm just showing you that I'm using my new Spellbinder shears. They sent them to me in one of my kits. And man, they're lovely. They're nice and sharp. Okay, so adding some adhesive to my pretty foiled background. I've decided that black foil rocks. I sometimes get stuck on gold and I forget to try all the other colors and you know they're really pretty lots of other colors I have another card at the end of this video for you that I did with uh, white on teal which is absolutely stunning so just lining that up so I have a nice little frame going on I like to burnish it from the back just in case I've got dirty hands and I'm not going to spread ink or something all over the front of my card I'm going to slice off the bottom so that I get a nice finished edge and then I'm going to add a whole bunch of little square foam tape onto the back and line this up and attach it to the card front. So now I'm additioning the sentiment to see where I want it to go. I've got foam squares on the left hand side. The right hand side I'm going to glue down because it is overlapping the flower which is already kind of raised with the foam tape. So I like it there. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue underneath that L and the O and Bob's your uncle. I'm a lover of bling so I had to add some sequins, gold ones of course, to uh, kind of correlate with my sentiment and bring the bling up around my pretty flower. I didn't want anything too bright so just a little bit of gold, just a sparkle. 
Okay, as promised, here's the second card I made with the teal background. And um, they're exactly the same. I just used different paper. So the first one was Echo Park and it was Fashionista. And then the second card is Vicki Bolton's and it's Lex Wander. It's a combination of these two. And I got them out of Simon Says Stamps Card Kits of the Month. Uh, they're very, very cool papers. I would buy them again. And so originally I did the black on the teal to see if I liked it, but I like the white better. I think it's lighter and it adds a cool contrast. So again, try your different colored foils. It's kind of cool, uh, the different kind of look you get with them. So here's my two finished cards. I hope you enjoyed them and I hope you'll dig through your stash of pattern paper and come up with some pretty tulips of your own. All of the products that I use today are listed underneath this video in the comments. There's also a link over to the Alex Siberia blog uh, where you can order this lovely tulip stamp and of course the amazing background glowing geometry hot foil plate. I hope you enjoyed today's project. If you did, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. We would really appreciate that. And until next time, toodles!